YouTube buzz it going the goat house is back today I got 10 realistic NFL trade candidates I got landing spots and predictions for all these players as well uh, this upcoming Tuesday is a big day and leading up to it and a few days after uh, we got that final roster cut date and it's gonna be feel like it's gonna feel like a mini free agency here so it's gonna be a lot of fun with trades cuts signings waiver claims uh, so this video kind of get an idea which players could be traded where they can land so excited to break it down we'll have you covered for all the mad here all the NFL news especially on our Twitter uh, it's on your screen link down below for that but make sure you like subscribe to notifications on here on the channel we much appreciate it cannot wait for the NFL season so super followers on Twitter get a bunch of bonus content they have been and for this I got a I got a list of other guys outside this video that could be dealt we'll talk a little bit more on Twitter in a Twitter format with those guys most of those guys are legit candidates but I don't think they'll be dealt a lot of these guys today I think re very realistically can be dealt here's our Twitter echoes NFL is linked down below Start with Denzel Mims, whose name's come up a bit, I'd say even over the last year, um, you know, but serious talks yesterday, actually. he, uh, Him and his agent requested a trade because he's a little further down the depth chart than you would that he should be really because the talent's got to be there I mean he's got to do a little bit better but the talent's got to be in there you know very talented receiver from Baylor good outside receiver contested catchability uh, you, you like uh, the length on him as well uh, you know which go, plays a part in the contested catches obviously so the top landing spots I'm going to go Houston who just seems like they're looking for a receiver outside of Cooks and Collins um not too strong. Those are it's a pretty good duo there, but not too strong. So they could use the, they could use a guy to compete for the trio spot. Uh, the Browns, yeah, they're not too strong after Amari Cooper, to be honest here. And uh, you know, with Watson missing majority of the year, it will 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 Fuller be on board? Uh, is that a guy they're interested in? We thought he might be if Watson was there. Oh, I mean, he'll be back. He'll be back at Watson, obviously. Uh, the Ravens need a receiver. The Bears could be in the market for a young receiver. They dealt for Nikhil Harry. Uh, he got injured. Will they deal for another? You could say they won't deal for another one because they already traded for one. They they looks like they're pretty good in the draft. They want to keep their picks. Or you can say they're looking for these young receivers. They're not afraid to trade those picks. Kind of going to argue both sides. And the Panthers, I've heard the, Pan the Panthers aren't the biggest receiver needy team. But I heard they're kind of looking around. They have been actually the last week or two uh, for another receiver. Because, yeah, I guess I mean, they got a solid duo, obviously, with Moore and Anderson. But the only one that's kind of you know he's going to be really good, you know he's going to be legit, is DJ Moore, even though I'm confident when Anderson has that, has that receiver too. Um, and then some wild card teams that could use another receiver. Some of these teams need one pretty badly. Will they actually pull the trigger? I like. It seems like a Colts receiver. I just don't know if they'll actually do it. Put them on the wild card. Just Denzel Mims just feels like a. Uh, and then they showed some interest in that draft. The same draft they took Pittman and they took Pittman over Mims. Good thing. Um, they actually had some interest in Mims back then. So we'll see. Value's tough to figure out. I, I you know will. It matched what the Jets are asking for, what teams are willing to give up. I can see a scenario where it's like the Jets are kind of – because they just drafted them somewhat early just a few years ago, second round. You know, so I think they'll be asking for a fifth. I don't think they would accept the sixth. I think we could see a kind of a swap of mid-picks. Like if for them to um, – you know, they actually it's, – it's coincidence, just thought of it right now. They did a trade with the Vikings last year, Chris Herndon, um, where they swapped. I think it was fourth and sixth – they actually moved up to the fourth to move back to the sixth. Maybe something like that. Maybe a fourth and a fifth swap. Something like that actually makes a little bit more sense than just getting a. Definitely makes more sense than just getting a seventh. Uh, I guess debatable between the six and then swapping. Uh, I went with the Panthers, which yesterday when I heard that Mims was pretty much on the block, I probably wouldn't have said the Panthers. I was probably thinking, yeah, the Texans, the Browns, mainly those two teams. And there's a lot of the other similar teams that need a receiver were next in line. Um, you know, but just really thinking about the Panthers, remembering that they kind of been in on receivers, uh, and then remembering that Matt Rule is the head coach. He was the coach of Denzel Mims at Baylor, where Mims just tore it up. You know, looked like a phenomenal prospect. Uh, you know, and they're looking for another guy in there. You know, they they like you know guys like Shy Smith who can play in a slot, but and they want another outside guy here. So I'm going to go the Panthers trade for Mims. Um, yeah, really thought about some of his other teams, the Texans, the Browns, the Ravens. I think main those are kind of the main next three for me. Um, be interesting to see where he goes. I think uh, about half the league could be interested because you like to think he still has upside. Um, you know, maybe some of those teams were high on him as a prospect, and he's still kind of a prospect in a way. Uh, and he's got a very cheap contract. 
that's the key too. He's under contract next year. So like it's not too little or too much under contract. Two years is great. Like some of these teams might be losing some guys in free agency this upcoming year, kind of looking ahead. Um, so then having Mills for, or excuse me, Mims for this year and next year, kind of a bonus. So, you know, teams like the the Packers got a lot of free agents, I think, coming up. But will you know, Packers are usually hesitant to pull the trigger on things like this. Uh, next, our receiver Darius Slayton. Some of the, you know, pretty much the same landing spots. I like him. I'd like him with the with the Ravens and the Texans can definitely be interested. I really look at the Ravens and the Texans and the Browns, kind of the same three teams mainly. Some other teams there. I mean, I would love to fit on the Packers as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think around a fifth round pick for him as well. Probably at the low. Yeah, I'm pretty firm on the fifth. I don't think I think fourth a little bit too much. Expiring deal. Anything less is a steal. Uh, I didn't see some wild card teams there, some similar teams. Uh, I'm going to say the Giants keep slating. This was kind of tough, though, because they actually are a little deep at receiver, um, but he's kind of um, that other true outside receiver with Galladay, whether it's behind or taking over Galladay's spot. You know, maybe unlikely because of contract, you know, how much they're paying Galladay. But uh, I, I, at the end of the day, I'm going to say the Giants keep him, but I strongly considered predicting him to go to – one of those first three teams, and we see the top five landing spots, but uh, the Texans, the Browns, the Ravens, they strongly considered sending him to one of those teams there. But that's definitely a receiver to look out for. Uh, Mike Kosicki, another no-trade prediction, but his name has come up. Um, you know, and you kind of wondered it too, What the, does he fit the Mike McDaniel uh, system, offense there? And they franchise tagged him, and... And there was some reports, was that earlier in the week, that Gasicki, you know, there's actually been a little bit of talk. Something like serious, but some talks. Uh, but he's over a 10 million cap hit for this year, so not everyone could afford him. So you have to kind of narrow it down then. You know, teams that need a tight end, teams that would want to trade for a tight end, teams that think Gasicki's a fit, and then teams that have enough cap space, you know, over 10 million. Really, you want a lot more than that because you, teams want to have cap space for the season. So you want to have typically in the at least like the 12, 13 range. So there's not too many teams that actually check those all of the boxes there. But uh, the Texans are in the market for a tight end. The Packers uh, could use one. Tunyon Hurt and just need another weapon. I think Gesicki with Aaron Rodgers would be dangerous. It would be downright scary. Uh, but the lack of blocking from Gesicki, which is kind of his problem in Miami and why he could be on his way out, uh, could also be a problem with the Packers. Uh, and the Colts, they've liked their tight ends in the past. Remember, Jack Doyle retired. Uh, they really liked Drew Ogletree, uh, the rookie, but he got injured. You know, So it's Mo Ali cox and J uh, Jelani Woods. I like Woods. I think he's kind of a raw prospect, though. You not, might not see. Don't be surprised if you don't see a lot of action. Or maybe, maybe if he's tight end, too, then you will. But, um, yeah, kind of one for the future. So uh, maybe the Colts. Not afraid to make trades, too. Then some wild card teams, the the Panthers, the Commanders, and the Broncos, maybe a little bit deeper than the other two. Uh, value fifth or fourth and a fifth is what I came up with. You know, because Kasicki's a very talented tight end, so talented that I think in the lack of blocking is you know, it's present, you know. But I thought maybe a third round pick in terms of value, but I don't think anyone would give up the third. You got to pay him over $10 million. He's got an expiring deal. So maybe a fourth and a fifth. Maybe that's max. I don't see just a fourth. I mean, it's a fourth and a sixth. Thought about that as well. I don't think there's a trade, though. I don't think there's a trade because it's just not enough teams that check all those boxes. Um, he's kind of expensive. you got to extend him. I guess you don't have to expect to ex extend him more of a rental. I don't know if the Texans want to go this big at tight end. The Texans are the team that's like, all right, really feels like they're uh, – you know, they traded for Shaheen from the Dolphins, and then that kind of fell through. If they wanted, that's another thing too. I guess if they wanted to trade for Kasiki, they probably would have already done that with the Dolphins rather than Shaheen. So that's a good point there. I guess that I just came up with that. Uh, but yeah, I think the one that makes the most sense is probably the Packers. But I mean, they they don't make these splashy splashy trades, and then the lack of blocking ability does that it probably throws them off. So uh, it's almost. It's more so there's no takers uh, is my prediction here. No, no, no real takers. There's probably calls going to be had, made, uh, but no takers, no trade here for this one for, for my prediction. We'll see, though. Very interesting uh, player uh, to monitor here. Uh, O.J. Howard, our tight end, that he just signed with the Bills, and it just almost sounds like it's not really working out. Not that it's, like, terrible or anything like that. It just sounds like, yeah, he could be, he could be traded or caught. I don't know if I see him getting cut. Just straight up cut. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, it could be a trade, or they try him out this year. 
Um, you know, it's there's really no situation where the Bills lose in this situation. Um, so you see some of the similar teams uh, that we just talked about for Gesicki. And I throw the Giants in there because why, why, aren't, why weren't the Giants involved with Gesicki? Because they are, they are very limited on cap space. Uh, that's kind of been their problem all offseason, um, trying to work around that. And, and, you know, so they wouldn't be able to afford Gesicki, no way. But O.J. Howard, they would be able to afford um, – you know, and it, and they need a tight end pretty badly. Um, you know, it's interesting too because you got some of that Bills staff with Joe Shane at the GM coming from the Bills and Brian Dabal coming from the Bills, the offensive coordinator. The Bills signed OJ Howard, so they kind of viewed him as a fit at one point. Maybe these guys viewed him as a fit. Uh, the Commanders uh, could use somebody behind Logan Thomas who was injured last year as well, but having that tight end too. I know they like Bates as a blocker, uh, but having another weapon could be interesting uh, for them and some wild card teams there uh, that could use a tight end. Uh, value is going to be cheap if the Bills trade them. It's going to be seventh, six maximum, but it's probably going to be a seventh. Um, who I really thought about here, I really thought about, I mean, the, first, the, the all the top landing spots, I guess, now, but I really the Giants made some sense there as well, but the Texans, it's pretty clear that they're in the market for a tight end the Shaheen trade fell through they need somebody um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Texans trade for OJ but I really can see any of those top five landing spots that I have you look at the Packers the Colts the Giants the Commanders I like the Giants second probably my next guess I feel like the Texans are gonna end it with somebody you know I take a look at um, OJ Howard and Nick Vanette from the Saints um, I got the feeling that the Texans probably end up with one of those two guys or could be some other uh, hidden guy out there just you know guy that they maybe make a splash or, or trade for um but texans yeah howard nick van Eck, guys like that and they end up with somebody here um mason rudolph's next which um yeah the steelers have three quarterbacks in there so it kind of makes sense so they want to keep three quarterbacks rudolph holds some value i'm back and forth between the fifth and the sixth because i think the value maybe says fifth teams you know looking for a backup quarterback that could potentially start for them now or later uh, but the Steelers don't also don't want to use another. They don't want to use that roster spot. So maybe the value drops a little bit. But a fifth or a sixth makes sense. But uh, and then it actually came out a little bit before recording this, according to Rapport, that um, he's drawing interest. Uh, Mason Rudolph is drawing interest from teams. So I was glad I had him on here here uh, for this video. Uh, so the Lions, Seahawks, Texans, Titans, who I came up with. Um, you know the the Titans. I heard they're actually looking for. And they actually worked out Kurt Benkert, so not quite Mason Rudolph level. But I have heard earlier in the week that they may be looking for another quarterback. They, they kind of want to keep Malik Willis as QB3 for now and then maybe use him in some unique uh, plays perhaps. So maybe them. It's a little bit kind of a wild card, but I threw him up there. The Texans, I think somewhat of a wild card. They're almost the wild cards are real deep wild cards that I have listed there. I really look at the Lions and the Seahawks. Uh, and I'm going to go with the Lions as my prediction here. It just feels like that Rudolph will get traded, so I felt like I had to have him I predict him. Had to predict him to get traded somewhere here. Uh, and the Lions definitely could use a second a QB2, a second string quarterback here. I don't really feel like they have one. I feel like they have guys that are kind of QB3s if that, you know. Uh, and then, you know, maybe, you know, they, they're they going to start golf. If some, for some reason, golf struggles enough where they put Rudolph in, they feel pretty good about it. If golf goes down, they feel pretty good about it. Or maybe they view Rudolph as a, you know, future guy for them. So I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions training for Mason Rudolph. Curious to see what it's for because maybe, you know, I was thinking leverage maybe dropping because it's, it's, maybe it's obvious the Steelers don't want to use three roster spots on quarterbacks, but it sounds like he's drawing interest, you know, so maybe that helps the leverage a little bit that this team's interested, that team. We don't know if a lot of teams. I doubt it's a lot of teams, but it just sounds like there, there's interest right now. So we'll see. Uh, Alexander Madison, which there hasn't really been much chatter about this, but I think this is very possible. You look at how deep the Vikings running back room is uh, and how Wagnu and um, Ty, Ty Chandler have looked in preseason. It just feels like they got a bunch of running back twos there. Uh, you know, and he's going to be a free agent after this year, so maybe the Vikings think they can get something from him now, a guy that's capable of starting for another team. Uh, the Falcons could use a running back that's capable of starting. The Eagles could use another one here. Uh, the Chiefs, maybe less likely than the other two teams. The Giants uh, definitely need a better RB2 because Barkley is injury concern. And the Saints, you know, the, I don't think Camaro's going to get suspended at this point. If he gets suspended, if they feel like he's going to get suspended, then this is a, the Saints are a strong option if the Vikings want to trade him there. Uh, but they like using a collection of running backs because they almost like using Camaro as a receiver sometimes as well. Uh, and then some wild card teams that teams that could kind of use another, maybe use another back, could be a little sneaky surprise, add another back. Value fourth or fifth round pick, a tough one too because Madison is like fourth, but he's got you know 
he's got an expiring deal, so is that too much? But fifth doesn't feel like enough, so maybe it's like a fifth and a seventh, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles. So maybe this is bold in general because no one's really talking about Madison, but I'm going to go with the Eagles. I feel like the Eagles could add a running back, whether it's Madison, a couple of the Browns guys being brought up, Kareem Hunt. Uh, I just I just don't think the Browns want to trade him. Dearness Johnson, they just gave him a contract in the offseason. Though, but those guys kind of getting brought up. Uh, Ronald Jones being brought up, maybe more likely a cut candidate than a trade, but could be dealt. Could the Eagles end up with him? I just like Madison as a fit uh, in that Sirianni offense, uh, just competing with those other, you know, splitting with those other guys. You know, I, think, I think it's possible he could be better than Sanders or the other way around, but um, and the Eagles just love running the ball, so they want to have talented backs in there. So, um, And the Vikings may be okay with it. Maybe the Vikings don't want to trade them because Cook has that injury concern, but they also might be okay with their other two young backs that look, that look promising there. So uh, maybe a little bold on this one, but the Eagles – uh, watch out for them with the running backs. Watch out for Alexander Madison there. Uh, Isaiah Wynn was brought up earlier this week that teams are calling the Patriots about him. You know, what made them call? Well, a lot of teams are pretty damn desperate for tackles specifically, but offensive line in general. Uh, and then you kind of realize the Patriots kind of tinkering around with, hey, can Trent Brown play left tackle? Uh, Michael Wynn, you plays right he plays everything he's very good you know maybe he's best at guard but he plays right tackle too and we got some depth pieces so they're kind of showing that a little bit teams calling like hey is win available we'll give you something pretty good because we're desperate for a tackle um you know even though wins had some minor durability issues and a little inconsistent but a solid tackle definitely definitely worthy of starting job here and some upside still but a long list of teams that could be interested well, he is a little expensive though so just over 10 million cap hit wise expiring deal so not everyone could afford him keep that in mind there's more teams that could use his services here but uh the raider and remember win actually played interior earlier in his career at georgia um, you know, could actually play center even, not just guard, but more likely he's a tackle, but the Raiders could use him at that right tackle spot or on the inside. Um, the Cowboys could use him to take that Tyrone Smith spot. Uh, you know, unfortunately he got injured at that left tackle spot there. Chargers could plug him in at right tackle. If the Chargers got a guy like win for right tackle, that, that offense line would look a lot better, really. Uh, Seahawks desperately, they might have the worst offense line in football. Um, you know, it doesn't help that Damian Lewis, the guard went down as well. Um, so they could use win. They would probably play him at right tackle because then they, they want to stick cross in at left tackle there. Obviously, uh, the Colts could use win at left tackle, uh, and the bears could use them almost anywhere, but you're starting to hear some promise from some of the young guys of the bears stepping up. Um, so maybe they roll, maybe they roll with one of those guys, uh, pr keep going with those guys, uh, wild cards, the, the kind of a deep wild card, but the Browns. Um, would would play him at center, actually, I, I would think. They would take him and put him at center if they want because they got some injuries there. That's probably deeper, though. Uh, and the Packers could use him at right tackle uh, or right guard, depending on where they're going to play Eldon Jenkins. Uh, the Panthers could use him uh, on the inside unless they want to put Ekwanu at left guard and they could put Wynn at left tackle. But these are kind of like... Things need to happen. It's like kind of an if here with these wild card teams. The Falcons, uh, the Bucks would play them inside probably with some of their injuries, uh, and the Broncos at right tackle. But those are just more yeah, deeper wild cards there. Value around a third round pick. Has he played like a third round pick? You know, up to that level, factoring in the expiring deal. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, perhaps. Um, but he's had some injuries again. Expiring, expiring deal. Had some injuries. A little inconsistent. But uh, offensive tackles, especially ones that are worthy of a starting spot, are just so valuable and so it almost feels like rare right now. So I think you go for a third. Could even go for a second. But I think the Patriots don't really want to trade him. Uh, I don't know if they would accept the third. So that's the thing there too. Will somebody offer more than that? Maybe, maybe somebody offer a second. Will the Patriots accept it? So don't think a trade happens here, even though he's been brought up. Uh, Dwayne Smoot, one that's really not getting talked about at all, was pretty solid for the Jags last year. They bring in a new staff already, obviously, and uh, switching the scheme up a little bit, uh, obviously, to kind of figure out where Smoot fits. To me, it just feels like traditional 4-3 defensive end, which is not really a, a great fit for the Jags, but he still can you know play ball. You know, he can play at the 3-4 end spot, but it just feels like... And they have so many options. The, the Jags actually have a pretty good group out there, underrated, young, talented group. They have so many options um, You know, now that they... 
it just really feels like they can move on from Smoot because just to save a roster spot, and they're not really, even though he's a solid player, they're not really going to miss him because they have other options that are as good or better that fit a little bit better. And there's other teams looking for edge help. Um, so I like him as a 4-3 defensive end. So we're mainly looking at those teams. But I did throw some 3-4, some multiple defenses defenses in here. Um, and I, I, like, I, like, I like the value of Smoot too because he's I think he's solid. And he's very cheap for a pass rusher that, that could potentially start on some teams, you know. So, and then the value. And the fourth might surprise people, but I think his value could reach that fourth just because of that. But Panthers, they missed out on Carlos Dunlap. Um, which they So they could be in the market for, for a start. Smoot would start for them opposite of Brian Burns. So I like the fit there. Uh, the Lions uh, make some sense as well. And they have um, they have quite a few defensive ends, but it wouldn't really surprise me if the, for them to look for another one there to kind of compete. There's nothing really firm, you know, with the Lions who's starting, who's going to play well. Maybe besides Aiden Hutchinson there, but but Charles Harris played pretty well last year. But I could see, I could, I can just see it. I can just see them bringing in Smoot and. Then, even starting them pretty early on, it's just it's just one of those ones. It's kind of like I, I could see it. Uh, and the Cardinals, who are were used to being a three four team, they've given some four three looks this off season um, with you know more of JJ Watt as a defensive end, you know, an edge rusher rather than a three four. And they've given some of that, those looks. So if they're serious about that, they could look to add Smoot. And the Commanders, who run a four three, and they have Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Chase Young. Um, is injured uh, for at least he's out on the pup list for at least four games and the Chiefs the Chiefs actually would be my prediction if they didn't pick up Carlos Dunlap if they didn't pick up Carlos Dunlap I would be predicting the Chiefs and I'd be pretty freaking confident about it which is, which is weird but um, and Joe Cullen is there who coached Smoot with the Jags last year actually just hit just hit me now um, so that's an interesting spot but they picked up Dunlap so they have Frank Clark they have um Dunlap and they have George Karlaftis who's looked really good in preseason so and Kane Doe the guy from last year from Florida State could step up as well so maybe they're a little I don't want to say crowded but kind of getting close to there so maybe not because of that if they didn't have Dunlap I'd be predicting the Chiefs right here and some other teams the Steelers run a 3-4 but they've never they always been a team that's like yeah we'll just take some more talented players and we'll work we'll work on them you know regardless of scheme fit Miles Jack former Jaguars for an example um, you know, the Steelers definitely need depth pretty badly at the position. The Patriots, kind of a multiple scheme. Ravens, you know, more of a 3-4, but could use some uh, body in there. The Cowboys, he would fit there. And the Rams, more of a 3-4, but they can use a body in there. Um, we talked about the value. I'm going to go Commanders. I really thought about the Panthers because it really feels like, you know, they have cap space. They have they clear cap space. This obviously they have cap space. It really feels like they're looking for another DN. So I really strongly consider the Panthers. Like I said, the, I would be picking the Chiefs right now if they didn't, bring, if they didn't sign Carlos Dunlap. Um, so that makes it tough. Uh, and something about the Lions. I don't know. It's something about the fit there. So I just see it. I could see it. So this is, that's a kind of a weird one. Like the Commanders and the Panthers make more sense because it's a bigger need than the Lions. But just something about the Lions there. I could just see it. Uh, you know, but I went with the Commanders because this defense is supposed to be good. It's, it could be good. It's led by Ron Rivera here, defensive-minded guy, legendary defensive-minded guy. Um, they have Montez Sweat, who's still still trying to hit his stride, but a solid pass rusher. And Chase Young, who um, still trying to get things going too, even though it's been a small sample size, but it also is out for at least four weeks, and they may be playing it safe with him rather than not. You know, so could he be out longer? And they don't have much depth at all. You start looking at this depth, they they don't have much at all. You know, so they need a starter right now. They need a starter opposite of Sweat. Um, so Dwayne Smoot, I have going to the Commanders just because maybe they need him a little bit more than the other teams with the Panthers. Panthers, Chiefs, and Lions really make sense to me for different reasons. So this, this is an interesting one that no one's really talking about. Uh, Ross Blacklock, you know, it sounds like he could be uh, traded. I think he just needs a better scheme fit. You know, this guy, a lot of out of TCU, I liked him, but it was like, yeah, kind of a raw prospect. Might not see a lot of him right away. And that's kind of been the case. But I, I expect him to be a very, a very solid player. And he still could be that, you know. Um, it's just trying to figure out where he fits. It's, he's a tough one to figure out where. That's what this problem out of TCU was, too. Where does this guy fit, you know? 
Um, a lot of time I was like, is this guy 3-4-N? Is he a 3-4 tackle? Could he play that 4-3 D-tackle 3 technique? I, you know, he's got the strength to maybe line up at nose tackle. We've seen him kind of line up everywhere with Houston, but they're more of a 4-3 team now. I think he fits a little better as a 3-4, and you can move him around a bit. Uh, the Rams are pretty good at developing those guys. Really, it's just more line them up kind of in the area of Aaron Donald, and they'll develop. They'll look a little bit better. Uh, you know, kind of could be like a Michael Brockers type guy who they didn't even have last year, obviously. Um you know, so I like the Rams. The Cardinals could use another defensive lineman. Um, Ravens as well could use. You know, they they um, they could use another guy in there and maybe look for a guy that can be part of the future as well. Uh, Clayus Campbell, you know, there for one more year perhaps. Uh, the Browns could use an interior guy, and the Saints could use another guy as well. They're usually good at coaching these guys up. So wild card teams: the Vikings, Lions, uh, Panthers, Patriots, and Niners. Niners. I don't know if any moves will be made from them until they get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, though. But I like some of those fits, and it's just wild card situation. So six round pick, a pretty good opportunity for a guy to for a team to get a guy with some upside. Still, I'm gonna go Ravens, and that actually might be a little bold as well, because it's like take a look at the Ravens, like a really good team that you know they you know they have some needs and some important spots like receiver and maybe edge, especially with Tyus Bowser on the on the pup now that that was news a little bit ago before recording this but so it might be a little bold like they're they there might be set with their starting defensive linemen but i actually think they can use some depth uh, i really like the fit of blacklock there i just really like the fit i can see them moving him around a bit um you know use him in different spots you know three four n three four d tackle you know both those spots there so i just it's just sometimes I just go with my gut here. And I just really like to fit with the Ravens and I can see it. So that's kind of where I'm going at there. Would like that pickup, especially for a six. If I'm the Ravens, I may even I may even give up a fifth, even though he hasn't done really anything. I just like the upside here. And I like to fit what the Ravens are able to do with these guys. Uh, and then last one here, Bradley Roby with the Saints. I thought about putting Roby up here. Well, I did put Roby up here. I thought about putting CJ Gardner Johnson up here because he was kind of holding in for a little bit, demanding a new contract. The Saints aren't positioned to give out that contract yet. Um, you know, I just think they value him too much to trade him. They were trying to compete this year. And I thought about PJ Williams as well. We want Roby here because the Saints are pretty deep. Uh, I was going to say corner, but it seems like in the secondary in general, pretty damn deep. And it was reported, I think, yesterday that teams are calling the Saints about some of their key depth guys to see who's available because they're they're they know that the Saints are pretty deep in, in some spots. They didn't really we didn't get specifically who they're calling about, even what position, but, you know, put the thinking cap on. They're pretty damn deep at the cornerback position. And uh, shockingly, they might be deep at the receiver position now too. So I thought about um, a guy like Callaway, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, you want to keep that depth perhaps because, you know, maybe back of your mind, Michael Thomas injury, you know, even if you're confident with him, you know, things like that. But, uh, yeah, so I want Bradley Roby here who uh, – is on a pretty cheap deal for a team if they were to trade from. There's some teams that need cornerbacks. So Giants, Cardinals, Raiders, Raiders maybe not as much as some of the other ones, but the Vikings and the Steelers, definitely teams that could use some corners, some wild card teams, some teams that could use some corners there. Um, I think a deeper wild, some of you know, the Rams, not that deep of a wild card. That's just a kind of a normal landing spot slash wild card. Chargers are kind of deeper because they're deep at corner, but J.C. Jackson is um, – He's gonna he's gonna miss a little maybe a little bit so could they pull the trigger on adding another corner it's a little deeper wild card Broncos seem to be fine position uh, Titans been just kind of on a roll for adding on a roll adding DBs so that's why they put the so those three teams a little deeper uh, Patriots Rams on there maybe a little more of true wild cards there but uh, Roby a fourth or a fifth round pick pretty cheap option uh, the two teams I would like it for the Steelers and the Vikings those were kind of the teams three and four but the two teams. Really consider the most the Giants in the Cardinals. The Giants pretty badly need another corner opposite of Dory Jackson. Factor in the Dory Jackson has durability concerns. You really need a corner. They want to run man coverage, so you need a corner that has experience in man coverage, and Bradley Roby has that. Um, the Giants really aren't. They're almost sellers, not buyers. So that makes it tough, but Bradley, Bradley Roby is pretty damn cheap. If the Giants start selling pieces first, there is Slayton guys like that, then maybe it's more likely. So selling could make them buyers is my, is my point there. But if they don't do anything, like if they're not selling at all, I don't know if they'll buy at all, but they do need a cornerback pretty bad. I want the, the Cardinals though, because they have a little bit of cap space this year. They're trying to compete. Uh, they're trying to contend this year. They definitely need another corner. Um, they've kind of been a little shy about it though, about like going out and getting the, the right corner when they, 
have worked out guys or signed guys recently. It's kind of been minor, you know, depth guys, you know, so that, that makes it almost makes me want not want to go Cardinals because maybe they're just, they just don't want to do it, you know, you know, get a legit starter, but he's so cheap and they're trying to contend right now. I'm going to go Cardinals. I can almost talk myself in the Giants um, as well. Vikings Steelers probably be next up on that list, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to predict the Cardinals here. Um, yeah, a little cheaper option for, for at, at corner. It is tough though. Cause the saints, the way they structure his contract, they're going to be paying, they pay like an over, over a 4 million cap hit next year for Roby. When I guess whether he's traded or not, he won't be on the team. So I guess it really matter, but, um, but it could feel weird that they're going to be paying for him a little bit this year. And then next year over 4 million when they didn't even have him for this year. So maybe they, I don't know if they'll think like that. If they can get a solid pick, I think they'll send him on, on his way there. But yeah, I'd watch out for some of those saints DBs just cause they're so deep. Teams are in need and teams have called. So, um, yeah, I, I and again, uh, super followers on Twitter and Twitter format. I'll be talking about some other. I want to talk about Alex Leatherwood a little bit. I, I didn't put him in this video. I, you know, I he could be traded. It's starting to heat up a little bit more. It's definitely possible. But I got a, like a long list, like almost twelve to fifteen guys that most of them I don't think will be traded, but they're legit trade candidates that, I, that we'll talk about. Talking about them with super followers there on Twitter. A lot of extra content on there uh, for everybody on Twitter. Just live news, rumors, updates, constantly talking during live games, even the preseason games. We got you guys up to date. Uh, just a lot of ways to interact with you guys on there, especially during the season. So join us. It's at Codos NFL. Link down below. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Regular season's right around the corner. Next week was a week week off for the NFL, but we're going to, besides all the waiver claims and everything, uh, but we'll have you covered with uh, full season predictions, all that thing, all the, that stuff. And then the next week, week one, we'll have our pick em, score predictions, power rankings, and a lot more. Cannot wait for that fun stuff there, so join us. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.